Welcome to part two of Traditions of Christmas by the editors of Victoria Magazine. Victoria Magazine has always delighted its readers with its beautiful and interesting content. Whether the focus is on travel, recipes, entertaining, or decor, the editors of this magazine have a gift of bringing a bygone era back for all of us to enjoy. Although they achieve this in every issue, with every season, my favorite by far are their Christmas editions. This beautiful book features some of the magazine's most memorable Christmas moments. As our thoughts turn to Thanksgiving and Christmas, many of us begin preparations for them both, and often at the same time. While both of these days are momentous, there is something especially wonderful about Christmas. It is a season which engages the whole world in a conspiracy of love. Some children may hang stockings on the mantle, while others leave shoes outside their doors. But they all dream of Christmas wishes and goodies. The Yuletide spirit unites the world in a shimmering, glimmering time of shared jubilation. Throughout the pages of Victoria's newest book, the editors take you on a Christmas journey through the cobblestone streets of Quebec to the awe-inspiring castles and cathedrals of Prague, to luxurious shops of Vienna, Austria, and even to the winter festivals of the Netherlands. Two days before Christmas in 1848, the Illustrated London News featured an engraving of Queen Victoria, Prince Albert, and their five children as they stood around a tabletop tree bedecked in sweets, candles, and decorations from Prince Albert's native Germany. In seeing this picture-perfect Christmas celebration, the English-speaking world began to embrace the tradition of dotting their branches with these glass globes. Today, Christmas lovers delight in discovering ornaments just like these at antique shops and flea markets. They remind collectors of their childhood, of a simpler and more innocent time, and of the Yuletide spirit embodied by Queen Victoria and her family so long ago. This is truly a delightful book. It is sprinkled with Christmas history, short stories, delicious recipes, and beautiful photographs. Norman Vincent Peale once said of Christmas, It waves a magic wand over this world, and behold, everything is softer and more beautiful.
Traditions of Christmas from the editors of Victoria Magazine. This book is 228 pages. It is published by 83 Press and it retails for $45. I'm very excited today. I just received my personalized Christmas cards, ornaments, holiday napkins, and gift cards from simplytoimpress.com. Their quality and selection are second to none. The paper quality, the printing, and the price were perfect. And with any order, you can receive 35% off with the coupon code TARTAN35. I will also leave all of the information in the video description. And if you spend $75 or more while supplies last, you'll receive this beautiful holiday card garland free. Just go to simplytoimpress.com forward slash holiday and enter the coupon code TARTAN35 for 35% off of your entire purchase. This week, we've had some lovely weather here, and I've been spending a lot of time outdoors. It's the first week of November, and all of my Halloween decor has been put away until next year, except for these little witches that I am boxing up along with their little friend, the crow. All of the jack-o'-lanterns have been removed but I do leave a few pumpkins out until Thanksgiving. We've not had much rain, so I'm making sure that all of the plants are not too thirsty. As I visit various parts of the yard, I've noticed that the camellias are really beginning to open. I love these flowers and they usually bloom through February. We have several of these bushes, which now seem like trees. Many of them were planted in the 1920s. They only last a couple of days once they're cut, but I like to put one by my desk occasionally. I'm going to take advantage of this warm weather and prepare some of my jardiniers and flower pots for amaryllis and paper white bulbs. I enjoy having them bloom during Thanksgiving and Christmas, and I will stagger these plantings over the next few weeks so that I can ensure they will be in full bloom over the holidays. They're nice to enjoy in your own home, but they also make very thoughtful gifts. I do begin decorating for Christmas a little bit early. I like to have a few of my decorations up for Thanksgiving. It just makes it seem a little more festive. I will slowly begin to do that now. This week, I will start with the foyer and then divide and conquer each room one at a time. By doing this early, I can actually enjoy the process 
of playing with color and various design ideas. And then I can take time to sit back, relax, and soak up the Christmas season with my family. Taking just a bit of time to prepare for Christmas in November has proven to be very helpful for me, mentally and physically. It can often seem like an endless and overwhelming list of things to do. And if you're like me, it's your job to get the gifts, to plan the meals, to bake the meals, to send the cards, to do the cleaning, the decorating, and meet with the teacher because your son keeps skipping third period. Oh, wait, I digress. My point is to start early with your Christmas plans. Go slowly and be kind to yourself. In our daily race against the clock, we often forget the importance of slowing down. We're constantly chasing deadlines, rushing to meetings, and juggling responsibilities. We tend to overlook the value of slowing down. And I felt that today. As I was leaving the grocery store today, I noticed that the roses were by one dozen and get one dozen free. I had already paid for my groceries, had them bagged, and was on the way to the car. As I was putting the groceries into the car, I had a left brain and a right brain conversation. One said, you need to manage your time. You've got a lot to do today. The other side said, but those roses were so pretty and you can get two dozen for the price of one. Without any further thought, I turned back around and bought the roses. After I got home and put away the groceries, I decided to arrange the roses. This was one of the most peaceful parts of my day. It was kind of a mindless activity that gave me a moment to reflect on how I felt and what I needed to do for the remainder of the day. I realized that I had been a little short with my son who had skipped his third period class two days in a row, and I sent him a text to apologize. But I did tell him that the PlayStation was still living in my room for a week. And then Roscoe started playing with the water, and it made me laugh. I realized by taking that moment to do something for me, it redirected my energy toward a positive mindset, and I saw how that trickled down to the rest of my life. So be kind to yourself, because if your cup is empty, you will not have anything to give to others. I hope you will join me next week as we look at The Elegant Life, written by Alex Papagristides, and we'll also take a peek at some of his Christmas decor. <music>